Hello everyone, and here we are back in Japan, episode number two, actually, of Japan, and episode number three of Summer Lake. And let's turn around to the finished product of Japan. Let me also unpause the game, because uh, we are not at this point where it's needed to uh, pause the game. It's still decent quality. But in fact, if you haven't seen last episode, before we just slowly move into this area, I um, highly recommend to watch the first episode of Japan, where, so to say, there is the, the speed build and the first kind of stuff you can see. But today, we are looking at the finished product. And I also grabbed some Japanese mu music, you know, from the background. So please stick around. We have a lovely little tour here. We're also going to check out some different weather, because there is some special stuff in here. I want to highlight a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I made the habitat functioning. I will talk you through what has happened. And in fact, I thought I will do a little bit, but in fact, I did just double the work, I guess, and just made so much new stuff. You can see already there are a lot more fences and stuff going on here. So it's actually framed nicely. And you, we are just entering little Japan um, as we go through here. So we have this kind of double circle little entrance gate um, that frames the whole scene. So if we go in here, you can really see this is like how you get in. Look at the view. Look at the view over here. And to the right hand side, you can see this is uh, a little pathway leading to the restaurant area. Um, this time though, we're going to take the other route. We just will come back here later. Um, but for the moment being, we just take the left hand side, sticking to this area and having a glimpse of this wonderful lighting here. Um, and in this lighting, you can actually also see the mist coming from the little um, ponds. I want to call them ponds, they're actually hot springs. Um, where the macaques go and take a bath and they're actually taking a bath because I used the trick to for those of you who were wondering how this works now these are forage boxes and you can actually see them using them quite nicely so whenever the, the keeper comes in and refills the forage boxes as the animals are you know just quite often doing in this game they will all storm there and sit down and actually it even looks like if they're washing themselves because in fact the animation of the forage box is that they're just kind of you know so stuff inside the box and uh, uh, which you know it's kind of the, the core element of the forage box uh, but it looks like they are kind of washing themselves with hot water so it's actually looking pretty dope and um, yeah what you cannot see really but I can tell you the wall in the backside just completely changed in the elevation so I needed to raise that and you can also see a little glimpse of uh, well a, a floating jumping macaque there but there's also like a little glass border over here which is um, needed to keep them away from these elements there's one running over Mount Fuji here and the same goes for the back here but you actually in some different lighting you don't really notice but this lighting is un a little bit unforgiving for the for the glass to be honest otherwise it's a bit more transparent and you don't really see that and to the left hand side you can see I used the same trick over here to keep them away um, from the fences because what actually happens if you do have something too close to these fences the animals do ignore any kind of border so it doesn't matter if I put as some of you have suggested to put like a little ditch down here this doesn't work because for whatever reason, um, the animals kind of see this uh, climbable area over here and, and once they, they see this and they seem to be close enough to it, they just basically um, beam there and then they can escape. So you really do need to have like a significant uh, distance in between, like two, three in-game meters. You definitely do have to give this um, distance in between, otherwise they will even ignore the glass barrier and it will just kind of run through. You can really tell how the animals use this uh, habitat nicely over here. I'm still wondering if this is someone sitting in here. Oh yeah, there is actually, look at that, this one. It's just taking a lovely bath over here. Now it's standing up. Oh my god, I didn't even notice. But look at that. I mean, this is just like the lighting. Oh, that looks so cool. Like with these these guys in the water. And also a little trick um, I haven't been talking about. But there's also hidden uh, sprinklers hidden in there. Um, the reason for that is, and there's also another sprinkler down there as well. Um, so that the animals actually get wet when they go into it. Because one of these side effects is, um, because these are forage boxes and, and only effects, the animals would not get wet because there's no actual water involved. But the sprinkler does make them wet and actually the, the radius of the effect is quite nice. So you, you know, I've just hidden that in here. So as soon as the animals are in the forage box, they get sprinkled by the sprinkler and they appear to be wet. So that's really the one gorgeous thing. But yeah, oh man, look at that. 
I just I just love it. And look at look at the keeper. He's he's kind of getting a glimpse from over there. I would love actually if they take this as well to judge what's going on in the habitat itself. I think that would be cool as well. But yeah. Um, you can also take uh, some things already out of here. You can see there is some more some more foliage. There's hanging some lanterns in here. So I made it a lot more active and, and vibrant and vivid in here. So let's just move on. Um, I did change a few little bits here about this wall. I changed the elevation of it slightly. I put some more uh, foliage here and there and changed a few things according to comments. Um, I also adjusted some of the placement of some lanterns. I actually looked at nighttime lighting. Um, I put some, you know, just some random rocks here and there, some some ground foliage, nothing nothing major, but just to change the theme. I put some windows here and there, and yeah, the major, the first major change comes into play in this area. Look at that, the restaurant now is fully done. There's a lot more going on here. We've got some stuff standing around, some more lanterns. Um, I, I put a lot more scenery in, a lot more foliage. Um, I kind of put a lot more stuff here and there, just some, you know, some lights hanging down. Uh, in the back you have some little elements in front of that wall. We have a bigger window here. Um, and just all over we have a lot more going on. I made this little slight red-ish thing down here. It's like almost like a little step. And I colored this red to get a bit of a contrast in, I guess, um, is what, what I want to call it. And then you also have like a lot of these different uh, plants that came in. I finished this planter. I made this little gravel area where we have these stepping stones to go over, as you can see over here. So then you have this uh, big tree, our tree of life, glimpsing over. But still you you feel like fully immersed in, in Japan. Also this, this wall over here helps to sell this immersion. Surely there is an open space in between because I didn't want to completely lock it off. Um, but I'll lock it out. I mean, I, I just keep these these sidelines because I think they, they they deserve to be kept in here. And now we just can can use this little pathway to be coming back. But you can really tell now this is this is how you are actually in the middle of Japan. And I think and I really hope that the music is selling us as well. Um, it just get you know translate this music uh, this feeling across. And I really hope that at some point we can import our own music into the game again, like in Planet Coaster. So we can actually have our own stuff. That would be that would be huge. Um, but yeah, so just just look at just look at that. I mean, I, I added a whole bunch of stuff. You know, I changed some of the things here. I've hidden some pieces in. I uh, did all the ground um, stuff, so it looks a bit more. Uh, I don't know. I, I want to call it dirty, but it's like a, a typical Japanese alley you're climbing up here. Um, a lot of pots here and there, just some lanterns. I changed some of the elements here so that the, the wall patterns don't look the same. We have some stuff hanging on the walls, we have some more windows. And um, yeah, also one of the biggest complaints some people had is uh, this area over here. And, um, oh, I see that, ah, it's not the latest version. This is unfortunate. I, I, there are some little tweaks I made. Uh, I, I, I will eventually make a cut. I will make a cut here and I'll be back with you after the cut so I can show you these little bits uh, I've done at the end. But uh, yeah, just give me that little second. There we go, we are back after the cut and oops, I gotta play again. So you can really tell uh, there's someone uh, going into that door. Many people complained about this area over here being uh, a little bit unrealistic because it was too close to the pathway, the entrance of the exhibit. So you always have this kind of a uh, little double gate where there is just a little bit of a um, area in between so that there is no guests coming in here. And so yeah, I made this little um, connection gate over here um, where the keepers can go in. In and you're not like you're not directly in let me just quickly show you uh, you can see there's some some kind of traffic over here this is not fully designed but there's a little bit of a um, you know just kind of a little gap in between so it's not directly connected and this is almost like a bit more backstage area to the right hand side this building here is in fact the backstage area I'm just gonna quickly go in here um, but you can definitely tell it's not like uh, oh my lord okay so we're on the roof Okay, sorry for the for the uh, uh, you know uh, the other cut here, but uh, I cannot really go in because it's scenery and they just bug me onto the roof, but, which we don't know. But there's just in fact just some facilities in there. It's nothing crazy, but what you can see, a lot has changed here as well. I did uh, redo the entire foliage, even though it doesn't look that way. I changed not that much, but I added some trees in and I put some lanterns in the trees, some very carefully placed ones, um, as well as this one in the backstage here. So you can really tell um, also a bit more. Foliage. 
foliage around the corners and stuff. So just like cleaned up everything a little bit um, to make sure it all looks and feels a bit better. Um, in this area, not that much changed, honestly. Um, it, it almost looks different because of the lighting right now. God, it looks freaking gorgeous with the lighting. Um, I'm just a little bit too bit. I, I think a bit too fanboy of my own stuff here, maybe, but perhaps. But I'm. I'm, I'm just still very surprised how it all worked out here. Um, and if we just oh, look at that, look at the glimpse you get inside the habitat with all the animals. And oh, I did not unpause the game. There you go. Um, you can really tell how they're taking the bath there. And yeah, if we if we use this um, this stuff over here, like this viewing platform, I can really get you a better view of what I've done also in the background here. So you can really tell there are some other climbing frames in here hidden in a way. So you can really tell the animals have some more privacy area. And this is exactly what I did. And this is something you do see in real life zoos as well. Um, how they keep the animals away from the actual dangerous area where they would be able to escape. Um, so this in fact is only scenery and this would be kind of a backstage access uh, they have here as well. Uh, I put some bamboo in between to, to make sure that this area looks a bit more finished and a bit more overgrown. You can really tell that this is the gap that you were expecting to be there. Um, when you want to make sure that they cannot get here so yeah this is the way how i kept the animals away from escaping and there was no other way of doing that uh but yeah so i think it didn't, doesn't really change too much in here um which is not a big deal um but yeah if we just uh, go around the corner here you can really tell um that this is a nice little sky view that we get of the animals taking the bath and just using the oval habitat and the cool bit um, as you can tell here is um, the glass wall in the back it doesn't really it doesn't really pop into your eyes in fact you you even start to you know you even start to ignore it by the time you come into the right lighting and it almost looks like this this fence and nothing else uh, which I, I still think is is a good thing here um, and let me just get rid of this person so that there is a lot more cleaner view for you guys while we are just getting our way back here we'll just go a bit quicker and uh, now yeah for the for the way back I'm going to change the weather for us because we need some some rain pouring down and also change the time of day so first of all let's get to rain and we just change it, uh, it to a later stage of the day you can see the Sun is starting to go down and we're just gonna keep it around this time of day first it's gonna wait until the effects kick in you can really tell already what is happening but this game just looks so gorgeous and this fits to this area so well that I just wanted to show it to you now you can really see how the lighting is now kicking in and, and just look at the reflections and everything it's just working so super well also with the slight reddish tones in the background I mean just 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 look at that just you know get the immersion um, get the feeling hopefully I can get the feeling across here uh, with the help of the music and now with the lighting yeah we've also have this no entry sign here I made it's uh, this time is my own sign I used some other pieces uh, to make it yeah I just wanted to try to make it some kind of Japanese uh, sign ish and I even was about to do this sign which means no entry in Japanese but you know since this is a European led uh, or maybe like an American led uh, Disney ish park they still have it in English and I kind of kept it the way it is um, but yeah you can really tell now um, how this starts to change in its visual appearance now we have a lot more colors in and it's starting to diverse a bit more from the previously more brownish one uh, towards an overall more colorful appeal as you turn around here we've got some reddish tones in more a lot more red I used a lot more red as you can see also for this roof up here this window I, I kept it fairly reddish it doesn't really pop into your eye at daytime so much but with the help of uh, the light in it and and some you know different views you can really see how it's popping up to the moon on top here and yeah now let's turn over here to this uh, wonderful area we have here and you can really tell the lighting really does help sell the idea of the little actually I was also sorry my bad last time I was um, doing the mistake this is kind of a I think it's called the sushi belt rather than band um, that was my the German in me uh, giving you the false explanation but that is the the sushi belt that where the sushi is delivered and yeah this is kind of the seating area look at the water down here just pouring down and yeah just overall this is how it looks and then uh, yeah let's just continue our way through here I'll just take that route around here loving the lighting effects here but it just 
Ah, oh, it's just in the rain. It just looks so good. Like, we just have another glimpse into that alley. Look at that. Just... Just that glimpse through here. Oh, man. I just... I don't know. I just love that. I just love that view. Just peeking inside the Japan area. Just look, look at that. It just kind of all came together at the end, which I'm still super... Uh, excited and super happy about and also thank you again to Mr. Sylph he, he just gave me some feedback in, in between also reinforcing me and kind of engaging me to, to, to use more foliage, to be more brave with the foliage, make it more overgrown not too tidy, not too neat um, and so yeah that's what I did I can really tell now this is why I carefully placed these lanterns here and there it's just starting to, to look so much better once you add some lighting also I put some some different spots here to light also our uh, cherry blossom tree and one thing I did on purpose I I left the left hand side of the habitat um, area of planters and also the habitat itself fairly um, fairly dark without any any lighting indeed because I you know the, these are no nocturnal animals whatsoever um, so they need their rest and I want to make sure that their area is not uh, super lit you know that it's just like they they should have night time indeed where they can have a little time and can you really tell it's raining so they're all sitting inside um and yeah then we have to look to the pagoda and was one last thing we are wanting to do is turn it to to snow and go back to a late uh, day lighting and we're just waiting to until it's turning into into snow because honestly this looks again super beautiful like i i i just cannot describe how much of a relief and um you know how, how much satisfaction that is once you've put so much time and effort into this build and then at the end it, it all starts to come together let's just look at how the the snow is slowly building up i love i love uh, just the weather effects in this game it just looks so stellar this is like kind of the German snow situation, uh, just half wet snow, nothing even covered fully. <laughs> and now it's getting more like the snow situation that I love. Um, but yeah, so I, I just wanted to wait for this weather quickly um, to show you one one different spot. Um, and therefore we, we just, you know, we're just gonna, gonna break into the habitat. It's gonna take this root here through the elephant grass and then just all over here to show you that bit here. Look at that, it just... This is the little area where you. Whoops, I'm I'm behind that glass now. Uh, unfortunately, there's no one in the bath right now. But I'm, I'm still a huge fan of this vista. Uh, it's so cool. And when, when these animals sit in here and they just enjoy their little their little, uh, yeah, foraging uh, going on, it just looks so cool. And I think if we just wait a second, um, there's no one in in these bathtubs right now. That's a bit unfortunate because it looks actually pretty cool. There's also no one coming to bring the food in here because as soon as the food is delivered they just all as I said storm here but I'm just mainly so happy with how the how believable the VFX make this water so yeah I think this is the, the, the biggest part of it what I'm so happy about is that it really does turn into a believable uh, little hot spring rather than just being a whole mess of uh, effects so yeah, guys, um, I'm, I'm just looking for a final spot to, to keep my camera before we end this. I think this is the spot to to be here, you know. Let's let's leave it here. I'm just going to drag my mouse down here. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of, uh, yeah, the summer lake uh, in the winter now with the snow coming down. But yeah, I just hope you enjoyed today's uh, final reveal of the Finnish Japan area. And... Um, yeah, the next episode uh, will potentially be on Wednesday. I'm not quite certain that I will be able to do it for Sunday, but you will see it on the channel eventually. Um, there will be another tutorial out in a bit, uh, so keep your eyes on the channel for that one. And uh, in case you want to support the channel, there's also now a new link in the end screen for the membership. You get some special emotes, some special treatment in Discord and stuff like that. You can read it there. It's nothing major, but in case you want to support me and help me out on, on improving the rig and stuff in the future for making even more beautiful videos for you, that's much appreciated. But for now, that's been it. And I really hope you guys enjoyed. I talk to you in the next one and 